Hey gang, let's take a look at this particular scenario from Lock and Load. It's the uh, Ring of Hills module, which requires a uh, uh, access to a couple of different bits and pieces to play the, the full game. It's an expansion pack as opposed to a full module. And uh, Ring of Hills set in the Falklands. We have uh, modern day British Royal Marines, the Parachute Regiment, etc. And we have the Argentinian forces. This is kind of an interesting scenario because it uh, puts the the British on the defense and the Argentinians on the attack as they uh, uh, try to reclaim uh, the initiative in this particular aspect of the battle. So it's set uh, on East Falkland on uh, May 22nd in 1982. And well, let's, uh, you know, Barring the history, this is a little of a and much a little bit of a, an enhanced scenario. Um, beefed up the Argentinian response to make it more of an interesting scenario, I think. So, anyway, let's have a look at the scenario, the tactical situation. Uh, the green buildings here and these units here. There's uh, <clears throat> you know eight or nine hexes there of. Uh, Buildings, and they're they're the ones you have to control to get you get your VP points. Sorry, I'm a little uh, a little out of it today. I don't know why. Uh, could have been the tequila I drank last night. I don't know. So uh, we've got to protect these buildings, and the guy with the most uh, buildings and the most kills at the end of the game wins. Three VPs per hex. Now, when we land uh, our Argentinians, because Argentinians are actually going to drop uh, uh, parachute in number one, and then number two follow that up with uh, a uh, uh, helicopter-borne uh, delivery of forces as well. And we'll look at them in a second. What we have, though, is that because we're playing this at dusk, we have a two-turn uh, or two- or three-turn range where the the line of sight is going to be reduced. It starts out being just uh, two hexes uh, uh, in open terrain that you can see out, then four hexes. So the first turn, there's a little bit of an advantage for the little Argentine dudes. Right there. So, so what I was trying to do as we look at this setup for this is how can I best protect all those buildings and uh, and also create a kill zone in here so that we force the Argentinian player to either land, you know, towards the beach, which is that way, or up in the more uh, you know distant terrain up here and make them fight their way towards us, like so. So. Uh, I love this rough terrain. It either gets a plus three modifier for defense. So you've got to put some guys in there, right? Let's do support this weapons team, which has got a 16 range and a five power of four. And I'm also putting a squad in there for double duty for protection and a foxhole. And he's in rough terrain. So he's going to be very, very hard to dislodge or suppress. So they'll be there. And that really gives us a kill zone in here. Uh, two hexes out. But then I thought, well, let's not mess about. Let's put the scimitar here. And it has two hexes. So that covers that uh, that box uh, in and around this area here. Uh, my rapid reaction force is going to be in the main building where the most VPs are easily captured and uh, at, at, at stake. That's a one-story building. And I've got uh, two squads stacked in there with this uh, machine gun. And that should be my rapid reaction force to go and assault, close assault anyone who t captures one of these hexes or indeed tries to take take on things from here. I put uh, some dudes here so that we can fire at our enemy when they, if and when they first land. And then I can retreat back into the foxhole from, from there. That's my plan there. And then over on the right hand side, we've got a, uh, what is this guy, Scorpion. Not as effective uh, a, a weapon. Uh, the range the, to hit is a little less than this than the Scimitar. And it only has one, or oh, it has two MGs. So it can fire, in essence, three times a turn, which is very cool. And uh, that will make it will make things interesting. And that also extends our, our covering arc for this, this, this uh, little area there. These boys are the ones that come in uh, turn one on the choppers. These guys come in on turn three, uh, subject to a die roll that's related to losses, and I uh, forget what the details are, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's see, and then we also have a second set of reinforcements on turn three for the Argentinians if, uh, 
if needed. Well, they'll be needed, I'm sure. But anyway, there you go. Uh, the force mix, seven, seven squads, uh, a couple of leaders, and, uh, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong team. Six squads, a hero and a leader. And I've got to, I've got to dig up the, uh, the hero school cards for those guys. And then the, uh, yeah, turn three. There's uh, these these guys come on board. There's a sniper and a leader, and a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, the sniper can actually move as well. There's also three Pukara strikes, which is an aircraft. That's this little guy. So it's going to be an interesting little scenario. Should be fun. We'll try and uh, focus the cameras. So I'm going to get distracted on that. And let's get going. All right, we'll see what happens and uh, see uh, if the Argentinians can take the take the Brits out.